Okay, so today's video is all about the worst makeup I tried in 2023. I actually tried a lot of bad products this year. I had to split this video into two parts. So today's video is all about the high-end and more expensive products that didn't work for me. And then in a few days, I'll share the drugstore products that didn't work for me. Don't get me wrong, I tried a lot of really good products too. I tried a lot of things that became absolute favorites and they're now you know, incorporated into my daily routine. But inevitably, not everything I try or you'll try will actually work out for you. And on my channel, I really, I really Really like to share the good and the bad. Not everything is going to be amazing, and that's just the reality of it. So I wanted to update you on the products that did not work for me, the products I personally don't recommend. I do want to say thank you to Iris for sponsoring today's video. I'm really excited to work with them again because I love Iris. It's a brand new beauty app, and it's a good place to go where you can discover authentic beauty reviews. And it's really nice because you can search for specific products to read through the reviews. You can also check out like the top reviewed products on the app, which I think is really helpful because I've been able to discover some new recommendations, and you can also see how people are incorporating these products into their routines. Iris has a new list feature, which is actually really helpful, so you can create and view full lists and include products from multiple categories. So the way that I use it is sometimes I'll condense a YouTube video into one list. I did one on makeup I decluttered from my makeup collection, and I did film a video on it, but sometimes you don't have time to sit through a full YouTube video. So what I love about the list feature is I can include all of the products on the list, as well as a review. So if you just want to scroll through and see which products I personally removed from my collection, then that's a really convenient way to do so. Personally, I'm a big fan of the Q&A feature. I just think it's so much fun to chat about beauty. So you can basically ask a beauty related question, whether you're looking for advice or product recommendations or something fun, like what's your dream wish list, And then people can comment back and you can also comment on other posts and just kind of discuss beauty with a community of people who love it as much as you do. Iris also has a new giveaway feature, which is really nice. So I wanted to share this with you because you can actually enter to win ongoing beauty giveaways with prizes worth up to $500. They have brands like Dr. Dennis Gross, they have Charlotte Tilbury, Glow Recipe, just to name a few. They even have special giveaways open to new members and they do have exclusive giveaways. So if you're really active in the app, you earn gems and then you have the opportunity to enter those giveaways too. I am really excited because Iris is actually hosting an amazing giveaway for you. You can win a gift card to Sephora or Ulta. First place will win $200 and then second and third place place will win $100 each. So to enter, all you have to do is download the Iris app. I'll put a link in the description box below and then head over to the giveaways tab to find all of the info. You're going to create a list, which is really simple. You just click on the little plus in the center of the app, add a title, a description, and then the products to your list. Keep in mind that the winners of the giveaway are actually chosen based on the quality of the list. So make sure to choose at least five different products to add to your list and then add just a review as to why you chose the products, whether you like them or you don't, because it's really helpful when you're using the app to see why people actually added those products to their lists or routines or why they like them or don't. I highly recommend checking out Iris. I'll put a link at the top of the description box below. I love it. I just think it's such a fun community. It's such a great place to discover true authentic beauty reviews and I spend a ton of time over there. So I would love for you to follow me and if you have Iris, let me know your username so I can follow you too. So as for the worst products I tried this year, a lot of these products are just bad quality. I don't think they're worth the price, but there are a few that I think are okay. And if you have a different skin type or different preferences, they could possibly work for you. And I'll be sure to share that specifically in today's video as well. Let's start with one that I tried fairly recently. I picked this up on a whim just because I love the loose version of this powder. This is the Huda Beauty Easy Bake and Snatch Press Brightening and Setting Powder. I have the shade Cupcake. I will say the shade that I got is maybe just a little bit too light for me, but that's really not the main issue with this. I actually didn't really watch any reviews on this. I think I saw maybe like an Instagram review or like a TikTok review, but I asked you recently on a community tab on YouTube, like what were some of the worst makeup products of the year or like the biggest flops of the year? And some of you said this powder and I definitely agree with you. This powder looks so heavy and cakey on the skin, which honestly shocked me because the loose powder is so good. It is more of a matte long wearing powder. So it's not quite as lightweight as other powders I've tried, but it definitely doesn't look heavy or cakey on the skin like this one. The second I applied this, like the first time I tried it, it basically ruined my makeup. It didn't really even look good initially. It picked up all of my concealer and then throughout the day, like it just caked up and it looked so heavy and just really, really bad to be honest. This doesn't feel anything 
something like the loose powder. I love the loose powder. I highly recommend trying that. If you are looking for a good long wearing powder that truly locks your makeup into place and gives your skin like a very smooth, even look. If you want a good pressed powder, I have to say I've been using the Charlotte Tilbury one a lot lately. I'm wearing that today in my T-zone and like the center of my face. And I've really been enjoying that, but you don't have to spend a ton of money on a pressed powder. Flower Beauty makes a great one. I really like the Catrice powder if you're looking for more of a translucent one. The ColourPop one is great if you want a super mattifying one. Skip over this one. Honestly, I think this next product was one of the biggest disappointments of 2023 for me just because I was so excited to try it out. I was shopping in store at Sephora and I had kind of wanted to try it for a little while, but I wasn't sure which shade to go with. And because I was in store, I was able to choose one that worked well for me. But the quality of this product is just not there. It's from Patrick Ta. I really like Patrick Ta as a whole, especially his blush duos. They are like magic because they come with a cream and a powder, both formulas look amazing on their own, but combined, they look flawless. And I especially love that formula because you can actually use the cream over the powder, so it gives your skin like this natural glow. It's just so, so good. I really do think those are worth the hype. So anyway, based on my experience with those, I picked up the Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo, and this is not as good. I know there are some people who really enjoy this because this does get some hype on social media. I wouldn't say the hype is quite as intense as it is when it comes to the blush duos, but I just didn't have a good experience with this. I feel like the products fell so short. They look really, they don't look good on my skin. They look patchy and uneven. They're hard to blend out. They don't give me like that smooth finish that I'm looking for. And they almost have like this flat matte finish which is weird because in the pan, it doesn't look like that, but on the skin, it doesn't, I think I was expecting like the same luminosity that I get from the blush duos and you just don't get that with this. So I'm disappointed in this duo. I really thought it was going to perform in the same way as the blush duos, but that really wasn't my experience. If you're looking for a good, high-end cream bronzer. The Makeup by Mario is my favorite. That gives your skin a very smooth, even look. It's really, really long lasting. As for powder bronzer, I don't know if there are too, too many high-end powder bronzers I love. Oh, you know what? The LYS Beauty Powder Bronzer is probably my favorite. That looks really good on the skin. It is a matte finish, but it doesn't look patchy or dry or uneven. So I would recommend those over this duo. I'm just, I'm sad about it because I was so excited to finally try it out and it was nice to be able to shade match in person, but I just think the formula is super underwhelming and really not worth the price. While you're on the topic of cheek products, I do want to talk about the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Beauty Blush Wands. These launched like beginning of 2023 and people were so excited for these because at the time, Charlotte Tilbury only had like the glowy blushes and highlighters and those were super, super popular. They still are. And honestly, I do like the glowy version. I have one, I got a mini in a holiday set last year and I still use it. I think it's really beautiful, but I didn't have the same experience with the Matte Beauty Blush Wands. These look really patchy on my skin. They're very uneven. I don't get that smooth, seamless blend I get with the glowy version. In my experience, these are pretty subtle on the skin. So you do have to really layer them up to get them to show, or you have to like go in with a lot of product, like squeeze it out and go in with like three dots of it. But the more I apply to my skin, the more likely my makeup is to look really patchy and uneven because it's going to lift my foundation underneath. I think that I have better luck applying it to the back of my hand and then using like a brush and stippling it on. But even still, there are just other liquid blush formulas out there that are better. They look more even, they look smooth, they actually last longer. These fade pretty quickly throughout the day. I just think these are too expensive for what they are. Charlotte Tilbury does have some standout products. Listen, I am the first one to say that I think Charlotte Tilbury is overhyped and overpriced, but I did try a couple of holiday sets from the brand a few weeks ago, and I got a lipstick set that came with like three minis, and it's amazing. The quality is so good. The lipstick itself is very creamy, very rich and pigmented, and I'm really impressed by it. So I do think there are some products from the brand that are maybe worth the money or worth trying. I just didn't find that to be the case with the matte blush wands. Another product that was super hyped up that really fell short in my opinion is the Rare Beauty Tinted Lip Oil. Now I know there are people who enjoy this formula, so there is a chance that you might like this. It's definitely not like a true lip oil. It's more of a glossy lip stain, but like a subtle glossy lip stain. So if you've tried like the Fenty glossy lip stains and they're too much for you, 
maybe you would like this, but I just don't find the formula to be moisturizing at all. So that's one of the main reasons why I don't like it. It has this nice glossy layer and it does have like the perfect amount of color, but that wears off very, very fast. And then once that layer wears off, you're left with a stain. But on me, it's like a very patchy, uneven, subtle stain. It doesn't look good. And it actually dries my lips out. My lips feel so dry when I use this product, even for like a day or two afterwards. You can obviously reapply it to get that glossy layer back, but I feel like you have to constantly reapply it because it wears off so, so quickly. So I just, I personally wouldn't recommend it. e.l.f. makes a glossy lip stain. Fenty makes one that's so, so much better. And if you're looking for a true lip oil, there are a million of those that you can try instead of this one. But again, I know people do enjoy this, so there is a chance it could work for you. Maybe go into an actual store and swatch it to see if you like the texture or the shades or the way it feels once that glossy layer wears off before committing to buying it. Another lip product that I really don't recommend trying is this one from Too Faced. So Too Faced, obviously has their lip injection line and honestly their lip injection lip plumpers are some of the most effective lip plumpers I've ever tried. They actually work to make your lips look visibly plumper and a lot of brands you know have these plumping lip products and they might sting or they feel like they're doing something but in the end there really isn't like an actual visible difference. That's not the case with Too Faced. I do think their products actually work. They tend to be a little bit painful so that's something to keep in mind. So when they launched these lip injection extreme lip shapers, which are meant to be plumping lip liners, I thought that was interesting. And because their plumping line typically is very effective, I thought I would try them out. These do not plump my lips at all. I feel like that's kind of the case with all plumping lip liners. Like I don't know if I've actually tried a lip liner formula that makes a visible difference by actually making my lips look more voluminous. Like obviously with a lip liner, they do make your lips look really full because you're lining your lips, especially if you overline. But this one actually didn't have any significant impact in the plumping area, but it stings like a lip plumper. It's almost stronger than some of their other lip injection glosses, and you can feel it the entire time this product is on your lips. It doesn't really go away. It's a very uncomfortable, burning, tingling sensation. So that might be something you're willing to deal with if it works, but if it doesn't work, there's really no point for it being there's really no point to it being painful. The actual lip liner formula is nice. Like it's creamy. It actually works to extend the wear of my lip product really, really well. So I think they could have just launched the lip liners as actual lip liners and they probably would have been fine. But the fact that they sting when you apply them is like an absolute no for me because there's no payoff. There's no plumping. Another fail from Too Faced. This is one of the worst palettes that I've tried in years. <laughs> I feel like that's saying something, but this was really disappointing. It is the Pinker Times Ahead palette. Now I did get this in the mail as PR. What else did I get in the mail as PR? The Charlotte Tilbury blush wands, the Too Faced lip liner. I think that's it. I purchased every Everything else with my own money. But I thought I would try it out because it does have a really cute color story. I thought it would be fun for the springtime. I love pink eyeshadow. It's soft, it's pretty, it's fun. And some of the shadows in here just have like a really nice looking texture to them. One of my favorite palettes, weirdly enough, is the Too Faced Natural Nudes Born This Way palette. And they have, or it has metallics in it that are like a little bit thicker and they have this nice foiled texture to them. So they look really good on the eyes. And there are shadows in this palette that look like those shadows in that palette. Anyway, I put it to the test and it's just not a good palette. There are a few shadows in here that look good on the eyes, like specifically this gold one looks really good, but for the most part, everything else is so underwhelming. It just lacks pigment as a whole. It's a very, very subtle palette, which might be a selling point for you if you do like something a little bit more subtle, but you have to really work to build these shadows up a lot. And the matte shadows in here are fine, but they're very, very powdery. And I feel like they just make a mess every time I use them. It just looks like there's more versatility within this palette than there actually is because there are a few deeper shades in here like this pink, this purple, I wouldn't call it like a deep purple, but on the eyes, it is so subtle. It's basically like a lackluster pale purple and I, I just don't recommend it. Too Faced, their eyeshadow quality as a whole has been really hit and miss. I heard really good things about the Italian Spritz palette this year, but then I heard really bad things about the Cosmic Crush palette. So I don't typically buy a lot of their palettes these days. I used to love the chocolate bar palettes back in the day, but I just think you, you really take a chance when you try their palettes because you don't know if it's going to be a hit or a miss.
There were two mascaras that I tried from brands that I actually really like, but these mascaras didn't work for me. The first one is from Fenty. It is the Hella Thick Volumizing Mascara. So this looks really good on the lashes. Like it definitely gives your lashes a boosted, thick, voluminous look, which is what it claims to do. The only issue with this is that it really flakes and smudges throughout the day. I can't really even tell you like the last mascara I tried that flaked or smudged all over my face within the last few years because that's just not typically an issue that I experience. But by the end of the day, like every single time without fail, I will have mascara all over my face when I use this one. So I just don't recommend it because it doesn't stay in place well. You can solve the issue by going over it with like a layer of a tubing mascara or using a mascara primer underneath. So I was able to get use out of this, but even still, like sometimes I would end up with a little bit on my face. If they ever launch a waterproof version of this, I might try it again because it does look good on the lashes. Like it makes them look thick and boosted and really, really nice, but it just doesn't stay in place well. The other mascara I tried was was a disappointment because I don't think I've ever tried anything from this brand that hasn't worked for me until this product. It is the LYS Beauty Lash Confidence Mascara. I actually just purchased their setting spray fairly recently and I love it. It is like my my number one product right now. It has the finest mist I've ever tried. Like it doesn't really feel like you're applying a setting spray because it is so light and soft, but it really locks your makeup into place well in more of a natural way. So I'm absolutely loving that product. I love their lipstick. I love their blushes, their bronzers, their creams. But this mascara was really just such a fail for me. There's not much I can say other than the fact that it didn't do anything for my lashes at all. It did not make them look voluminous. It didn't lengthen them. It didn't lift them or curl them. When I apply this product, it really, it's just so underwhelming. I, I can't, it doesn't do anything and it doesn't build. So I, even if I go in with like more and more and more, it doesn't look like I'm actually applying more of the product. I will say just personal preference, the wand is a little bit too big. So that also makes it kind of difficult to use, but I don't know. I don't know what happened with this one. It was just all around a big disappointment, which is weird because the brand as a whole really is one of my top favorite brands. I actually don't have this product with me, but the Merit Lip Oil. I think I had the shade Mapleton. I was so excited about this because it looked really pretty in the promo photos, but it really was so underwhelming. And I think sometimes when it comes down to, you know, the worst makeup products of the year, it's not that they absolutely like destroy my makeup when I wear them. Sometimes they do, like that Huda Beauty powder, but a lot of the time it's just that they are underwhelming. And if you're paying $25 for a lip oil or like, you know, $35 for a bronzer, you want it to work really, really well. You want it to look good, to be enjoyable. And the Merit lip oil just wasn't anything special. It was so lightweight to the point where I would apply it and then five minutes, Five minutes later, it felt like it wore off. It's a very, very thin formula, which sometimes when it comes to lip oils, I do like a thin formula. Most of the time I like a little bit of a thicker formula that actually seems to stay in place better, but there are other formulas from the drugstore that feel so similar to the Merit one that I wouldn't really recommend spending the money on the Merit one. On top of that, the packaging was so cheap. Like the actual lip oil applicator was tiny. It was the smallest little doe foot ever. So you'd have to like dip back into the product multiple times to evenly coat your lips. And the third issue for me was that it would tint my lips pink. Like the actual product in the bottle looked so pretty and it would kind of look like that initially. And then after I had it on for a few minutes, my lips would end up bright pink. In the description on Sephora's website, like if you really scroll down, it does mention the fact that it is like a pH changing lip product. But in all of the marketing, in like the main description, you really don't see that. So I personally didn't realize that when I bought it that's probably my own fault. Like I could have really looked into it before purchasing it, but it just doesn't look flattering on me at all. So that was an absolute fail. I just feel like I really did not enjoy that product in the way that I thought I would. This product is from Melt Cosmetics. I, I want to love this because it is so creamy. The color is perfect for me, but it just doesn't last. It is the Slick Waterline Eye Pencil and I have the shade Ivory. So this is a beautiful creamy eyeliner. It glides on 
so nicely. And honestly, like if it did stay in place well, I probably would have purchased it in every single shade because it is so smooth and creamy. But when I apply this to my waterline, after like an hour or two, it's completely worn away. Right now I have an eyeliner from Tarte. It's actually like a dual ended liquid liner and then eye pencil. And that one will last all day long. Like I will apply that when I do my makeup and then at the end of the day, it's still there. So I know there are eyeliners that can actually last on the waterline. This was just not one of them. And what's so interesting to me is when I talked about this on my channel previously, I got a few comments from some of you saying it was incredibly long wearing for you. And it just goes to show like makeup really can work differently for people depending on either the way they like to apply it or their preferences. And even a product like this that I would describe as like not long wearing at all, for some people, it really is long wearing. It's just really interesting to me. So this for me, it was an absolute fail, but I know some of you do really enjoy it. Okay, so I'm a big fan of the Inky List. I like pretty much every product I've tried from the brand, but this one really did not work out for me. I almost feel like the description of the product is the exact opposite experience that I had with it. It is the polyglutamic acid dewy sunscreen. To me, this feels like an incredibly matte sunscreen. It doesn't look glowy or dewy on my skin at all. It's almost like thick, a little bit tacky, hard to blend out. So I feel like when I'm applying it to my skin, it is not a pleasant experience and it doesn't glide on in the way that a lot of other sunscreens do. I feel like typically when I'm applying sunscreen, I want it to be a quick process. Like I wanna get it on my skin and either like get out the door or start with the rest of my makeup. And this one just has like a strange, thick feel to it. Once it dries down, like it really does have a fully matte finish. And I will say makeup does not apply well or wear well on top of this product. And I don't wear makeup every single day. So I feel like I was able to use it on the days I wasn't wearing makeup, but there are just so many other sunscreen formulas I love that work well under makeup on their own that this isn't one that I really enjoy using. On top of that, there is so much pilling with this sunscreen, whether I'm wearing it on its own or with other products, it really was just very difficult to use and it wasn't a great experience. So this was a fail for me. And again, I love pretty much everything else from the brand. I just couldn't get this one to work for me. I actually wanted to mention this product from Fenty. I used mine out fully, so I don't have it to share with you. I loved the texture of this product. It's the Skin Melt Off Jelly Oil Makeup Melting Cleanser. It's like the perfect combination of a cleansing balm and a cleansing oil. It's almost like a thinner version of a cleansing balm. So it actually spreads all over really, really nicely. It does work well to remove my makeup. It's really gentle. It rinses off easily. So I really like the product itself, but the pack Packaging is terrible. When I was first using it, there wasn't like a big issue with it, but I felt like the more I used it, the more it would dispense way too much product. This is actually kind of a common occurrence with Fenty skincare in my experience. Like a lot of the time I love the formula, the ingredients are nice, it feels good on my skin, it's really effective, but the packaging is really bad. And sometimes packaging does make or break a product. And in this case, you push a button on the top of it and then it dispenses the product, but there's no way to really control how much product it dispenses. And as I was getting to the end, if I would lightly tap the button, all of a sudden it would dispense like five times as much as I actually needed. And I feel like it got worse and worse the more I used the product. So for $34, I just couldn't justify that because I felt like I was wasting so much product when I went to use it. So again, the product itself is great. I probably would splurge on it and try it again if I knew the packaging was I was actually able to use the packaging without wasting the product. So in that case, it was like a true packaging fail, but I definitely wanted to share that because I just feel like you don't get your money's worth since you end up running through the product way too quickly. Okay, that's everything I wanted to share with you in today's video. So again, I'll have a drugstore version of this video going up in a few days, but thank you so much for being here. And again, if you like authentic beauty reviews, if you wanna hear the good and the bad, the pros and the cons, I definitely recommend checking out Iris. I'll put a link in the description box below. I know you will love it as much as I do. Thanks again to Iris for sponsoring today's video. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you very soon with a new one. Bye.